The capital asset pricing model, often called CAPM for short, is an investment theory that shows the relationship between the expected return of an investment and market risk. To better understand CAPM, I think it will be easier if we look at an example and how it can be used. This is the formula for CAPM. And if you are of the math persuasion, then perhaps this formula makes a lot of sense. But for the rest of us, let's break it down to try to make it a bit simpler. So there are only three inputs that go into CAPM. First is the risk-free rate. We're going to use the 10-year Treasury note. And as of now, it's September of 2018. The 10-year Treasury note is about 3%. Next, we have beta. Beta looks at the relationship between our investment and the market. For our example, we will use a stock. So for us, beta looks at how the stock moves compared to how the stock market moves. The market, by definition, gets a beta of 1. So let's use Apple stock so we can see an actual example. So Apple's beta is 0.99. Now this is mighty close to 1. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that Apple stock acts very similar to the market. So if the market's up 1%, well, then Apple stock will be up almost 1%. More exactly, it should be up about 0.99%. Same is true on the downside. The market goes down, Apple stock will be down just short of 1%. And just to see how this impacts things, let's throw a second stock in there. Right now, Facebook has a beta of 1.2. So if the market moves up or down 1%, Facebook will move up or down 1.2%. The closer the beta is to 1, the more the stock moves like the market does. The final input in our formula is the expected return of the stock market. Now, coming up with this number isn't always clear. Some research companies publish what they expect long-term market returns to be. You could also use a historical average. For our case, we're going to use the average of the past 10 years, which is about 9% per year. Okay, so now we have all of our inputs. Our risk-free rate is 3%, beta for Apple is 0.99, and for Facebook it's 1.2, and then we have the expected market return of 9%. Okay, so let's plug these numbers in. So RF is the risk-free rate. So here we could plug in 3%. This symbol here, this is a Greek symbol for beta. For Apple, we can replace this beta with 0.99, and we can put Facebook's formula down here. And there we will put 1.2. Then in the parentheses, we have the expected market return minus the risk-free rate. They call this the market premium. For the expected market return, we're using 9%. And for the risk-free rate, it's the same as the 3% that we're using over here. Now, for those interested, the horizontal bar that's above the R right here and here, well, that bar indicates that this is an estimate. So now we know we're using an estimate of expected market return, and that will give us an estimate of the return of this asset. That's what the lowercase a stands for. And over here, M, that stands for the market. So when we calculate these, we end up with 8.9% for Apple and 10.2% for Facebook. Now, don't forget, the only difference between Apple's formula and Facebook's formula is their individual beta. So how can this be used? Well, one way you can use CAPM is to use it in calculating the WAC of a company. WAC is short for Weighted Average Cost of Capital. And that WAC can be used as a discount factor to value a stock in something like discounted cash flow. Now, technically, for WAC, you would use both the cost of debt and the cost of equity. CAPM can be used as the cost of equity. So for a quick illustration as to how it can be used, let's imagine that Apple and Facebook have no debt, which means that WAC for both of them is the same as CAPM. Let's see how that would play out. Let's imagine that we had an expected cash flow coming from Apple in two years. And let's imagine that it is going to be $1,000. Well, since cash is more valuable today than it is in let's say the two years, well, what we can do is use the results of our CAPM calculation as a discount factor. So if I'm going to get $1,000 in two years, well, for Apple, using our CAPM results of 8.94%, we can use that as a discount factor. And we can see that that $1,000 in two years is worth $842.61 today. For Facebook, if we were also expecting $1,000 in two years, that would be worth $823.43 today. So in theory, that's the present value of your future cash flow expectations. So what you want to do is pay less than that today. And if your expectations are correct, well, the bigger the gap between what you pay today and your calculated present value, the bigger your returns will be. Now, CAPM isn't the only way to calculate a discount rate or an expected rate of return. There's also something called the arbitrage pricing theory that's quite popular. There are also a few multi-factor models that work as well. 
So keep in mind that CAPM is one of a few choices, not the only choice. At some point in the future, I'll do similar style videos to this on the arbitrage pricing theory and multi-factor models. And if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button, and I appreciate you staying with the video all the way to the end. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.